Hello and welcome to Castle Brokenhead Presents Let's Play Dragon Quest. Today I will be playing the original NES version of this game. I considered porting the Android remake over, but I really don't like the controls in that version, and besides, I really want to capture that late 1980s feel that those of us over 30 remember all too well. Even though I have done my best to break this down into shorter, more digestible episodes, uh, do bear with me as this is my first ever Let's Play series. Before we get started, I want to share a little bit about this iconic game that would not only launch an entire franchise, but also change the face of console gaming forever. Dragon Quest, known as Dragon Warrior in the West, is the first title in the Dragon Quest game series. It was developed by Chunsoft and published by Enix. Dragon Quest was originally released in 1986 in Japan for the MSX and the Famicom. The game was localized for North America and released in 1989, but the title was changed to Dragon Warrior to avoid infringing on the trademark of the pen and paper role-playing game Dragon Quest. The pen and paper Dragon Quest went belly up and was just an awful, awful game. Dragon Quest was a critical and commercial success in Japan, despite some pretty major technical limitations on the Famicom system. Fans could not get enough, and Enix could not wait to roll out the upgraded English version to North American audiences with higher quality sprite animation and the ability to save the game directly on the cartridge, a feature that the Famicom simply couldn't support. Its release as Dragon Warrior in North America, however, would prove far less successful. No one at Enix or Nintendo could figure out why it was that American audiences just weren't taking to it. In June of 1989, Electronic Gaming Monthly's Quarterman had speculated that Dragon Warrior would be Nintendo's big release in North America that Christmas. Nintendo Power Magazine provided three feature articles on Dragon Warrior for issues between May and October of 1989, and the November-December issue included a strategy guide. The March-April issue of 1990 had a map of the entire game world with a poster of Super Contra on the other side, and also featured a Dragon Warrior text adventure. In late 1990, Nintendo Power even went so far as to give free copies of Dragon Warrior to its subscribers, including a 64-page Explorer's Handbook that had a full walkthrough of the game and additional backstory not mentioned in the original instruction booklet. Nintendo was so desperate to get rid of unsold copies of the game that they literally gave them away to subscribers. At the time, the game cost approximately $50 American at retail stores, and the magazine's subscription fee was only $20. The giveaway attracted nearly 500,000 new magazine subscribers, and many more renewed their subscriptions just to get the game. This may ultimately have led to what little success the series did find in the Western market. Nowadays, Western critics have noted the game's shortcomings while acknowledging its importance to the genre. Its original pseudo-Elizabethan English script has been praised in many of these reviews. As a whole, Dragon Warrior has been credited with establishing the basic template for the Japanese console RPGs that followed. Directed by Koichi Nakamura, written by Yuji Horii, and with character and monster design by anime legend Akira Toriyama, Dragon Quest will forever live on as the father of all JRPGs. So who's ready for hours of endless grinding for levels and gold at every new town? I am, of course, so just sit back and enjoy as I torture myself by playing the entire game without shortcuts, cheats, or really proper rest in between sessions playing. So let's get going with Dragon Quest. Now we will begin a new quest. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, there is a formula that is written into the code of the game that determines how your character will level up. It's done based on the first four letters that you choose. 
Now, we're going to back up a little bit here. For those of you who are unaware, the canonical name of your main character is Lodo. Interestingly enough, even though that is your canonical character name, it's also who your character is supposed to be a descendant of. Now, I do know that some reviewers have used Kefka, the villain from Final Fantasy Depends what you want to call that number. Uh, but myself, I use Brokenhead. Go figure, Castle Brokenhead uses Brokenhead as his name. We're going to go with fast text because we don't want to wait around forever for people to speak. Descendants of Erdrich, listen now to my words. It is told that in ages past, Erdrich fought demons with a ball of light. Then came the Dragon Lord, who stole the precious globe and hid it in the darkness. Now, Broken Head, thou must help us recover the ball of light and restore peace to our land. The Dragon Lord must be defeated. Take now whatever thou may find in these treasure chests to aid thee in thy quest. Then speak with the guards, for they have much knowledge that may aid thee. May the light shine upon thee, broken head. Well, let's take a look here. Uh, the most important thing to notice about this game is the incredibly overdone menu. You actually need to use a menu option to open doors, take stairs, search. You can't even just search a treasure chest. This game is so OG that you actually have to select take in order to open the treasure chest. Let, let me show you what I mean here. Let's search on a treasure chest like you would do in any other JRPG. Broken head search the ground all about. There is a treasure box. No shit. You don't say. So we are going to take the contents of all three treasure boxes. Get 120 gold towards your startup gear, a torch. One of the neat features of this game is that when you go into a cave, you cannot see anything but your character sprite. Literally nothing else, unless you use a torch or some kind of spell that we may or may not discover in the future, which would be as effective. Dost thou know about Princess Gwalen? Never heard of her. Half a year now hath passed since the princess was kidnapped by the enemy. Oh, goodness. Princess needing rescuing. I wonder if that's a trope that's going to continue on. Never does the king speak of it, but he must be suffering much. Broken head, please save the princess. Now, if you do say yes, he just says, Broken head, please save the princess. And this guy just tells us that a key is needed to open the door. And he tells us basically that this game is so old school that the starting town is not even in the starting castle. You have to travel from one to the other. He also tells us that sleep heals all wounds. No shit. This, but you gotta keep in mind, when this game came out in 1989, there were no games like it on console games. I mean, Ultima had come out uh, on the PC, but there was nothing filling this space for console gamers. Now, I am going to walk around and talk to people, and as much as I would love to do voices for everyone, I'm not going to do that. Uh, this intro uh, video that I'm doing is probably going to be a little bit longer than some of the others. Uh, I'm going to warn you all in advance as well that uh, my recording software uh, doesn't have any sort of animation when I pause. Uh, so 
as we get to fights that we've seen 50,000 goddamn times in a row, it's just going to cut to after the fight. So if it's a little choppy, I apologize. Uh, I am brand new to this. So mostly people are just telling you beginner info. This guy right here is completely fucking useless. The light flashes and nothing happens. But you'll notice I have zero MP. That's why nothing happens. He actually heals your magic and uh, or restores your MP, your magic points. And that's uh, pretty much all you really need to know. You can cast healing spells once you get them. Uh, and just have him restore that, and you'd never need to spend money on an inn. Now, these guys are just telling me where I am. I'm at Tantagal Castle. Ooh, big surprise. Now, oh, I was hoping that wouldn't happen. We are going to try fighting him. Uh, it's going to be a little bit cringy. Uh, the Red Slime is a fantastic monster, uh, iconic in the series. The slime and the red slime are pop culture phenomenon in Japan. Uh, it has about four hit points, an attack of seven, only three defense. It's got decent speed at 15. They'll give you two gold points each uh, and just one experience for beating them. Now, we can see here, we are in the town of Breconary. Uh, and that pseudo-Elizabethan script, you can see that with all the these and thous. Uh, again, I am going to be talking to everyone, but I'm not going to read out what they say, because it's just... I don't have it in me. Uh, I am going to talk to you about the game as we go along. tell the Nintendo uh, stretching its limits when you get too many sprites on the screen at once. Ha! <laughs> Did you see what she said? No, I am not Princess Gwalyn. As if she would be in this starting town. Classic. Alright, now, before you go buying weapons, because a lot of people are going to rush off and do that, fantastic thing right here, the dragon scale, you spend 20 gold on it, right at the very beginning. And, go over to your items. You donned the scale of the dragon. Now, that gives you one defense point. I believe it's one defense point you get for that dragon scale. It might be two. I could be a filthy, dirty whore liar. Uh, very possible. But here's the neat thing. There is a glitch in the code of the game. You can sell that dragon scale, and you still have that plus to your defense. That doesn't go anywhere. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to continue to use up that slot in my inventory just to keep it honest. Tell King Lorik that the search for his daughter hath failed. I am... Almost gone. Ah, uh, well, fuck you. Fuck you in the asshole. Can you tell I've been demonetized? Um, I'd never planned on monetizing anyway. So, let's take a look here. Now, when you first start, you were going to be tempted to spend that money on leather armor or small shield. Or you might think, hey, you know, four hit points for that slime. I could save up and get that copper sword. That would be a mistake, my friends. Because, frankly, slimes don't pay enough. And then right now, that is all you can fight till you level up. Buy yourself a club. Do yourself a favor. All you gotta be able to do is kill enough guys that you can come to the end heal yourself and still have made money and that's going to be the start because we are already going to have to begin grinding 
So if the video does clip, that's going to be because we ran into a monster that we've already seen. So you can expect to see a, that pretty much right away. Right. The key is uh, these hills here actually have a higher encounter rate than the plain grass down here. Uh, the forests do have a higher encounter rate than the plain grass, but not as good as in the hills. Alright, so you can see now that with the club, we're beating the red slime in two hits. No problem. This is what we're going to do for the original grind uh, to get the first few levels. Alright, here we have the original slime. It only has three hit points, an attack of five, defense of three, speed of 15, but as you can see, it only gives experience and gold of one. Pretty useless. So, we're going to continue on until I get the first level, and then I think that's going to be the end of video one, to be honest. Uh, it took a little bit longer with the intro, but that's all right. The important thing is that you do not leave this area before you have got your first level. And that means a lot of walking around in hills. A lot of walking around in hills and fighting slimes over and over again. And as you can see, at one experience point per fight, we are not leveling up quickly. And at one gold per fight, we're not getting anywhere near uh, what we need for more gear very quickly. Uh, honestly, the red slimes wouldn't make much of a difference. They just have a little bit more hit points and provide an extra gold. Uh, it won't help us level up any faster. Though. And that's really what we care about right now for this video. Here we go. Courage and wit have served thee well. Thou hast been promoted to the next level. Thy power increases by one. Thy maximum hit points increase by seven. As you can see, no magic yet. Uh, a hit point boost, which we're going to take and just be grateful for. Uh, so we're going to call it quits for right there for now. And next time, when I rejoin you, uh, I'm going to be leveled up uh, probably to uh, somewhere between level 5 and 7. Uh, and I'm going to have enough money to get the gear we need. Uh, I'm pretty much just going to grind it out until I have enough gold uh, to get the leather armor, leather shield, and the copper sword. Uh, and I don't need to bore you with me fighting slimes for the next hour or two. Uh, so until next time, I am Castle Brokenhead, and keep gaming, everyone.